Absolutely. California is the epicenter of robotics. I mean, have you been to L.A. lately? Every fifth car is a Waymo ferrying people around with no driver. As Waymo conquers the asphalt, Pronto AI is hitting the dirt with a new deal to bring its autonomous driving technology to the quarry. The company has struck a deal with Komatsu. Komatsu has mining-sized trucking, and they are now pairing with driverless technology by Yes, Pronto. Komatsu is a Japanese company, one of the largest manufacturers of industrial heavy equipment in Asia, and second only to Caterpillar globally. Pronto's founder, Anthony Lewandowski, has pretty much all but owned the autonomous driving landscape since he helped build the world's first autonomous motorcycle, the Ghost Rider, in 2004. And then he went on to co-found Waymo, Google's self-driving car, in 2009. Now Lewandowski says he wants to, quote, Automate everything with wheels. So how fast are those autonomous wheels moving toward dominance? Joining me now in a first on Fox Business interview is Pronto founder and CEO Anthony Lewandowski. Uh, everything with wheels, okay? So let's go to the quarry. Tell me about the challenges because, you know, you help build Waymo. Driving on asphalt is pretty easy. Well, not easy, but it's certainly easier. And now we're looking at trucks that are on dirt and dealing with mountains and rocks. How does the technology work? Well, it works in a very similar way as it does for the Waymos, but uh, also very differently in terms of the sensors involved and the uh, places to drive. Uh, it's very structured on the road because there's lane lines and it's clear where to go versus when you're driving on a mine site, there's so many places for you to drive and not all those are necessarily optimal. Why did you want to do this uh, and how big is the market? The market's quite huge, actually, and we hadn't seen anybody outside of uh, the truck manufacturers, meaning Caterpillar and Komatsu, making uh, a system that was fieldable uh, in the market. And we saw that 25% of the jobs for truck drivers are unfilled. And so for us to you know, play our part to make America great again and bring rare earths and critical minerals back, we had to build the robots that, uh, to do the jobs that the people didn't want to do. What kind of challenges did you face? And I ask that because I know that these are your technology is equipped with cameras. And what else to make sure that they don't hit some type of gigantic rock or some hill of sand and fall over? I mean, explain to us how you were able to put this, I guess, software together to make sure it actually worked. Yeah, absolutely. So there's uh, sensors, which is really important. We have uh, cameras, we have uh, LiDAR and GPS to see the world. Uh, then there's an onboard computer that takes that information and feeds it to the AI model to drive the system safely. And it does so by getting lots of data. So we typically deploy the sensor kit ahead of time on a site to collect and learn how the operation runs. And then with that, train the model and then uh, load onto the truck and automate the production. One of your first deals was with Heidelberg, Heidelberg Materials. And, and it's a site in Lake, I believe, Lake Bridgeport, Texas. Uh, when that first deployed, in how many trucks? And were, were you so excited standing there? I mean, what kind of problems did you first endure that you then had to deal with and fix? Yeah. So. The mining environment is much more harsh than driving on the streets, so the wear and tear on the sensors and the vehicles was much harder than we were expecting. We were breaking steel bars. They were being used to mount cameras because the trucks were so wow. uh, taking such an abuse on the road. So it was really uh, crazy from a mechanical perspective. Um, so we rolled out and automated seven trucks and uh, completely automated the production for that site from the, you know, Howard Hollish perspective. And that really was a game changer for them because they were struggling getting uh, drivers and they weren't able to meet their you know, production numbers without going overtime. And now we can provide all this extra capacity for them that's on demand. Uh, in the summer, if you want to run the trucks longer, just keep them running. And in the winter, you know, just run them whatever the hours that you need to do to meet your demand. Let's get to the human component of this. And we've spoken to Jensen Wong of NVIDIA, who has been very clear that there are a lot of jobs that will go away in all of this. So the truck drivers, even though there is a shortage of trucking, truck drivers, this kind of job is repetitive. It's actually dangerous. Uh, so to take a human driver out of these trucks, I would think is a positive until they lose their job. Are they losing their job or are they then transitioning to something else in this industry? 
Yeah, we've seen everybody that we've automated a truck that they were previously driving go on to move to a better job in terms of automating um, their truck did not lead to them being unemployed. It led to them doing a different job either on the site by operating another piece of equipment that isn't as easy to automate, but is you know necessary in, in filling in one of those vacancies or moving to a different site and helping fill other uh, vacancies there. So right now we don't see this as a net loss. We see this actually as a net positive because we're creating a lot of new, you know, made in America technology uh, and manufacturing. I'm thinking of probably what you've already thought of, of what's next. And I'm a skier. Mm -hmm. I watch the cats, the snow cats at night that groom the mountains in the pitch black on verticals that you can't even believe. And I think those drivers, that's so dangerous. Have you ever considered that or am I way behind and you're already there? No, I think you're 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 ahead of the game here. You know, we're really focused on um, <laughs> rinse, lather, and repeat um, phase of our business of deploying more trucks. Mm -hmm. But you're right. There's a lot of places where automating the grading and the machining of the earth, whether it be snow or dirt or you know other material, is uh, is a critical and and you know we want to help do our parts. We're really focused on trucks right now because we think there's a huge opportunity there. Okay, so when when you do the snow cats, you can be like you know, tell Vail Resorts it was my idea. Um, That's finally. Right. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll blame it after you're wrong, yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, I have to ask you, because having been one of the co-founders of Waymo, who do you think is winning the robo-taxi race right now and who might jump ahead? Um, well, there's the domestic race, right, where Waymo is clearly ahead in the lead uh, substantially over competitors. But there's a whole geopolitical where, you know, China has three legitimate competitors to Waymo that are being deployed in a variety of places. And so it's really up to America to, to rise up and, and deploy the tech and scale up and show that we're, um, you know, leading the field here, not just in America, but worldwide. Uh, you know, the Waymo, by the way, has come to New York, finally. Um, this morning, uh, Bailey, one of our producers, snapped a photo of it right there at, what was it, uh, 46th? 46 and 6, so just down the street from our Fox studios. Yeah, she caught, jumped out like the paparazzi inside. But do, do you expect that these will just completely proliferate every city soon? I mean, if you look at it, being driven around in a driverless car compared to you know, a manned Lyft or Uber, it gives you more privacy, um, you feel safer, it's very consistent, you can understand it. So it's kind of the next step of the evolution of what the car will become, right? And so you think about it today, there's a lot of names for like dashboards. These are all coming back from the horse and carriage age. But looking forward, you know, I could see every single car having the sensors and the technology built in, not yeah. just the ones that are for sure, but the ones for your driveway as well. Well, it's been proven that uh, autonomous driving is actually safer in many cases. And even Warren Buffett, who obviously his company owns Geico Car Insurance, he said it's really going to hurt our business because robotic drivers are much safer than human drivers, so fewer accidents. Anthony, good luck to you. Thank you so much. Pleasure being here. We want to see your next big iteration, so keep us posted. Thank you so much.